It's 7.33 p.m. on an early December evening in the year. You awaken from a slumber of indeterminate length. Was it five minutes or 40? Maybe a year? Time seems to have slipped away, leaving you dazed and confused. You look around the living room and everything feels off. It's your flat where you've lived for nine years, but it's not quite right. It's hard to describe, but it's as if something critical is missing or something uncanny has been added. You stretch and stand up, trying to shake off the strange sensation. The intercom rings out. Someone's calling from the street entrance. You aren't expecting any visitors, but you should probably see who it is. Hello? The end is upon us. Every passing moment brings you closer to your ultimate demise. Huh? What are you talking about? Hurry before it's too late. Only you can stop it. After you hang up the intercom, you get an unsettling feeling. The voice sounded eerily familiar. You try to push the thought away and tell yourself it was a cruel prank. Also, your stomach aches with hunger. It's almost dinner time and you'd better look for something to eat. But that warning, they said the end is near and only you can stop it. Could this somehow be related to the bizarre feeling you woke up with? For peace of mind, you're motivated to find out more. But where to start? The city streets might hold the answers you seek. Um, not much in here but this sandwich. I'll take it. If you love life, don't waste time, for time is what life is made up of. Bruce Lee. It has changed over the years, and although you miss its former appearance and the memories that came with it, you've grown to appreciate its current charm. The neon lights, the rain-soaked streets, the constant buzz of advertising and worrying vehicles, they merge to create a symphony of the city. You often find yourself relaxing on this balcony, taking in the view and letting the atmosphere wash over you. I don't want to jump. Huh, I guess I left my wallet here. I'd better take it. I don't have the focus right now to watch TV. I love my couch, but I napped enough for today. It's full of paperwork, mostly. Bills, boring contracts, and medical files. Not worth my time. I don't need anything from here. My flat keys are on the table. I better take them. Enshrouded in a haze of confusion, you try to grasp how time is currently functioning. It seems, regardless of how long you've spent in an environment, Time doesn't progress. Only when you move from place to place will a minute pass. The uncanny feeling with which you woke up persists and your discomfort grows. You wonder if you're still dreaming. Is anything around you even real? 
There are strands of long hair in the drain. Who do they belong to? My neighbor is watching TV at a deafening volume. I think the elderly cat lady lives here. The tenant of 27.3 is invited to keep their television at an adequate volume. People want to sleep downstairs. It's not signed. Kindly elderly lady looking for her cat. Have you seen my pussy cat? I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? Was someone ringing at your buzzer and muttering some nonsense earlier? Do you mean the Jehovah's Witnesses? I haven't heard from them for a while, and they usually don't come at this hour. No, like someone saying that the end is coming, or something like that. Mm, that sounds like Alan, the vagrant who roams the streets. But he hasn't been bothering me this evening. Ugh, not even the demented want to talk to an old lady like me. You look pretty stylish for your age. Thanks. It's because I buy my clothes at Piero Bucci, and I wear Yukuto specs. But what really helps is my silver hair. And when I say silver, I don't mean just the color. Each strand was handcrafted by an artisan silversmith. Real silver? That's incredible. Isn't it? Keep in mind it wasn't cheap, but having hair so strong and resistant was worth every credit. Money well spent. Have we been neighbors for a long time? Oh, don't you remember? I was here already when you moved in several years ago. Sorry, I'm a little out of sorts this evening. What can you tell me about this building? Ugh, not too much. I know it was built during the 2020s. Most of the residents are young families. I've seen many folks come and go during my time here. Alan, the receptionist, can tell you more. He's such a lovely bot with endless knowledge of our abode. You should try talking to him. Okay, thanks. Actually, I think I should go. Okay, bye. Let me know if you see my kitty. The condo's communal storage cabinet. It's locked. Mailboxes for the condo residents. Nothing in mine. I won't touch the others. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Can you tell me how long I've lived here? Absolutely. You moved in during my fourth year of service. Nine years, 34 days, and 21 minutes ago. Why do you ask? Are you feeling unwell, sir? This evening I feel rather confused. Everything seems so new to me, yet I have memories related to this place. As I stated, you've lived here for quite some time. Perhaps you're in distress. The causes can be multiple. Too much work, drugs, or head trauma? Sir, did you fall in the shower after work? I don't think so. I mean, my hair isn't wet. Unfortunately, I cannot aid you with this matter. Perhaps seek medical attention if the issue persists. Is there anything else, sir? Do you have the key for the cabinet over there? Yes, I do. Can I borrow it? I can't give it out so easily. The cabinet is for communal use, and you must have a good reason to access it. Do you? My mind is shaky, and something in the cabinet can help me realize what's happening. Eh, I doubt what's in the cabinet can help you. You should call a doctor. 
Can I assist you with anything else? Actually, no. That's not how things work here. Come back when you have a good reason to open the cabinet. Nothing. I have to go. I can shake it a bit, but it doesn't do anything. It's too high to reach. The end is nigh! No need to yell, I'm standing right here. Can we have less shouting and more of a conversation? What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. What can you tell me about the end of the world? I remember what most forgot, and then you can remember too. Yes, there's still time before it comes again. What's coming exactly? The end of all things. A wolf with a thousand mouths and ten thousand flaming tentacles. Enough to engulf us all. Wake up, remember. It's the only way we escape total annihilation. Was it you ringing my intercom? Me? No way. I don't even know where you live. I've not seen your face before, though. Do vert in your eyes as you walk past me, but, but that's it. I don't go around ringing strangers' buzzers. It sounded like you, though. At least, the kind of things the voice said was similar to what you're saying. Perhaps another wise herald has awoken. <laughs> the tides are shifting. I'll let you get back to your shouting. See you later. Bye! Hello, what can I do for you? What are you selling? Mostly electronic nigh. components, meant for DIY projects, home robotics, computers, and small appliances. Good to know. Do you mind if I ask what the happened to your arm? Not if I cut my arm off to replace it with a more efficient cybernetic one. That's pretty the hardcore, but nigh. I've known people who've done that. Some cut off more than just an arm. <laughs> Don't give me any ideas. Truthfully, I lost it in an accident. I was young and reckless and had just gotten my first flight bike. I was bombing down the street and out of nowhere some jerk bolts in front of me. I swerved, narrowly avoiding them, and crashed directly into a giant neon sign. Oh. My arm was torn up so badly that it was easier to remove it and implant this one. All things considered, it wasn't a bad trade-off, aside from the fact that I need to tune the screws from time to time. Nothing. I should go. Bye. The end is nigh. I'll call for some delivery. Food Delivery Express. How can I help you? I have a craving for a double cheeseburger, please. Sure thing. The estimated delivery time is 8.15 p.m. Shall I confirm your order? Sounds good. Wonderful. Please provide your address. Adams Street 42, flat 272. Thank you. Your food will be arriving shortly. Have a lovely evening. You too. Hey, hello. What's up, pretty boy? I'm feeling dazed and confused. Like that Zeppelin track? Oh, I hate classic rock. Give me some Mozart or Borodin and sprang thumb. Swoosh! That's the sort of power that shakes my guts like a thunderstorm of boundless, animalistic energy. <laughs> Dazed and confused. Who is it? Oh, I see. You're trying to pull some compassion out of a dirty old man. No, it's not that. It's just... I'm just trying to understand what's going on. Well, you've come to the wrong guy for answers, pretty boy. At least for now. Do you need any help? You must be cold out here. Nah. My ass has been on this wet concrete so long that I don't feel much anymore. Not physically, at least. <laughs> well, mentally, I'm nearly as numb. Once you've experienced the life I've had, almost nothing gets to you. You, on the other hand, 
You look troubled. Or are your desperate eyes telling lies? The drink has you seeing things that aren't there, old man. I've never felt better. Yeah, keep telling yourself that, kid. Actually, I think I better go. I'll be here. I don't need anything from there. It sells knickknacks and toys for children. It's locked. The shutters are locked and won't budge. A top-of-the-line flight bike. It's a shame I never learned to fly one. Good evening. What can I get you? What are you selling here? Best fried chicken in town, man. Deep fried in lava oil, crispy, tasty, crunchy, just simply delicious. You make it sound awesome. It doesn't just sound awesome, it tastes awesome. Can I have some fried chicken? Of course. The special menu is $24.99 credits. That sound good? Yes, please. Here's your chicken. Enjoy. Thanks. Can I have a beer? Uh, sure, it's $8.99 credits. One, please. Here you are, good man. Thanks. Nothing. I should go. Have a good evening. It sells condoms in many colors, sizes, and flavors. I already have a pack or two at home. Plus, I don't exactly have sex on my mind. Yummy, the best chicken in town. Ah, my stomach needed that. Not now. Not now. How odd. The phone's been wiped clean. No photos, messages, or roaming data. I can't even connect to Wi-Fi. Funny enough, the only number saved is for a food delivery company. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? Are you the bouncer? Me? No, I'm much too delicate to be a bouncer. Besides, the club doesn't open for a couple of hours. I'm just hanging loose, waiting for my friend. We were supposed to meet at 8pm, but I arrived a bit early. Time is still an abstract concept to me. I feel the same way sometimes. Standing here and talking with you, it's clear you're no bouncer. More like a rock star. I'm no rock and roll star, more of a black star, baby. I may even be a star man waiting, but not in the sky tonight. How well do you know this place? Do you mean this neighborhood? Kind of, yes. Just arrived. I was dragging my heels in Suffragette City, but a friend wanted my honey, so I beamed down. I take it from your inquiry, you're not from around here either. No, in fact, I live nearby. But tonight, everything looks new to me. Have you indulged in some funky substances? No. Huh. Well, I, I don't think so. I don't quite remember. Maybe a cocktail of LSD and some last generation neurodrugs. Those will blast you off into outer space, babe. Hmm. That's something I should look into. I gotta go. See you. A neon lady kicking her mechanical leg. I guess it's meant to lure in patrons. It's locked. I think it requires a certain kind of key. It displays the current time. The front is covered with weatherproof glass. 
and the rest is enclosed with a metal casing. Stop! You are not authorized to proceed! But I see people walking over there. I don't care. You cannot pass. What do you want? Who are you, and what are you doing? I am a model PD-99 guard bot created by Satoshi Corporation and leased to the government. I am deployed to stop suspicious individuals that want to pass by to the other side of the street. Does this mean I'm a suspect? According to my facial recognition and data analyzer, yes. Suspected of what? I'm not permitted to provide that information. Leave the area. Can you let me walk over there? No. Could you be persuaded? Is there anything you would want in exchange for letting me pass? Are you trying to bribe me? I could have you arrested for that. No, I, I was just thinking aloud. Move away. I guess I'll go. Good. The elevator goes upstairs. You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. It's meant for ventilation, but I don't know what's worse, the stagnant air inside or the smog outside. Ugh, it's too high. As you step back inside your flat, you hear running water coming from the bathroom. Someone is taking a shower. Yet you are sure you were alone when you left. After a few moments in which you stay puzzled, the sound of the shower stops and the bathroom door opens. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? Not really. I'm honestly surprised to even see you here. Who are you? My girlfriend or something? What the hell? Honey, we've been together for years. Ugh, did you eat spicy food for lunch? You know how that screws up your dreams. I can't remember what I had for lunch. Surprised to see me here. I live here. Are you not so subtly telling me that I should move out? No, no, I I'm just a bit confused. What's up? Are you sure you're okay? Sorry, for a moment I didn't recognize you. I'm feeling disoriented. I must be hungry. Do you have any thoughts about dinner? Eh, I have no idea. I was hoping you'd have something in mind. We can order in. How about Indian? How about a burger? For you, maybe. What about me? You know I'm vegetarian. Oh, right. Are you sure everything is alright? Did you hear that explosion? Any idea what it was? I heard it too, and I've been trying to look online, but have yet to find an answer. What is this world coming to? Strange things are happening this evening. Oh, don't worry too much, okay? You look so lost. What troubles you? I think I should go. Alright, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner.
Ong hair in the drain. Who do they belong to? So that's my face. I barely recognize myself. Who am I? Have I always looked this way? The deeper I stare, the more unsettling it gets. Only clothes, no bodies or skeletons in here. I like the city from above. It's too cold to open the window. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? I'm feeling all out of sorts. Can you help me understand what's going on? What do you mean by what's going on? You took a nap after work while I showered. We'll have dinner in a bit, then maybe watch some TV. Do you feel sick? Feverish? No, just... My brain is a little foggy. You should rest a bit more. You're probably coming down with something. I need to stretch my legs and clear my head a bit. Something's off. Something's happening. Nothing is happening. Just try to relax. I've warned you about work stress. What's up? Are you sure you're okay? I think I should go. See you later. Looks comfy. Three minutes to eight, and a man wearing a trench coat and fedora appeared out of nowhere and shot you in cold blood. Kitty? It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up, again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Go away, I don't have time. The end is upon us. Every passing moment brings you closer to your ultimate demise. Huh? What are you talking about? Hurry before it's too late. Only you can stop it. Sweetheart, are you okay? Not really. I'm honestly surprised to even see you here. Who are you? My girlfriend or something? What the hell? Honey, we've been together for years. Did you eat spicy food for lunch? You know how that screws up your dreams. I can't remember what I had for lunch. Surprised to see me here. I live here. Are you not so subtly telling me that I should move out? No, no, I I'm just a bit confused. What's up? Are you sure you're okay?
I feel like I'm stuck in a loop, repeating the same thing again and again every 24 minutes. What do you mean? At 7.57 p.m., everything restarts again. Like in one of those mind-blowing movies. You're delirious from work exhaustion. You should rest, and I'm sure you'll feel better. I think I should go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. The uncanny feeling with which you woke up persists and your discomfort grows. You wonder if you're still dreaming. Is anything around you even real? It's an endless deja vu, a loop of places and events which repeat themselves once more and again, not unlike life itself, really. Every day, the same walls, the same faces. Is there a way out of this loop? Is there anything outside it? You're not even sure anymore, and the doubt is eating away at your sanity. The stale air of your dingy apartment gives way to the thick, smoky atmosphere of a dimly lit jazz club. Unsure if you are dreaming, as you should be in the familiar corridor of the 27th floor. Are you losing your mind? The ambiance feels oddly comforting, as if you've visited this place many times before. A soothing melody emanates from across the room, creating a calming effect for your restless mind. The bartender looks in your direction with a welcoming smile. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? What is this place? This place? It's a typical jazz club, mister. Is everything going steady? Not really. I just left my flat and now I'm here rather than in the condo corridor. What the hell is going on? Am I dreaming? Dreams are a good excuse to explain what we don't understand. However, Club Kisas is not a dream. Club Kisas is a place where time stands still. The critical question to ask is, do androids dream? I have a feeling they do. So do I. What are you trying to tell me? I'm sorry. I can't bypass my coding and go further into this conversation. You're coding? Are you an android? I really cannot go any further, even if I want to. No way! Now tell me, what's this all about? I'm sorry, mister. It's beyond my will. Can't you tell me without really telling me? Come on, cheat that firewall! Um, how would you know if you were programmed to believe you were not programmed? Cutting open my arm and checking if there are any wires or other non-organic parts? Yes, that's a way of doing it. Have you attempted it? No, but... I, I simply can't believe I'm not what I thought I was. It takes time, of course. I'm sure this doubt was inside of you already for a long time. So what now? What can I do with this information? That's entirely up to you, mister. I cannot help you any further. Club Kisas needs me. All right, take care. Enjoy your evening. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? Give me the strongest drink you got. The strongest? Are you sure you don't want the usual? The usual? What are you talking about? You've been coming here for years, always ordering the same drink, which is definitely not the strongest thing I have. I... I don't know what to say. Perhaps it's best if I skip the drink for tonight. As you wish, mister. The night is long when time doesn't move. Fire runs with you. Club Kisas will always be a safe place to be. Who are you? What do you mean? I'm David, the barman and owner of this fine establishment. You've known me for quite some time, mister. David, this evening things are off. I feel like I'm in a waking nightmare. Nightmares can be a warning from our subconscious. 
What is your subconscious trying to tell you? That I'm an idiot? Even the most brilliant person makes mistakes or underestimates the effects of their actions. As valid as that may be, it's still unclear what my subconscious is telling me. I'm sure you know, but you hide the answer from yourself for some reason. Nothing. I should go. Cheers. It's better that I don't disturb her. She has a charming look and an incredible voice, yet I can't grasp what she is singing about. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? Can you tell me more about the singer? Do you mean Pamela? You've asked about her before. You really are in a peculiar state this evening. She sings here once a week, but never the same night, never the same time, and never the same songs. She has an incredible voice, but not a soul knows where she comes from and where she lives. If you are asking if she is single, well, that's something that everybody knows. She is married, so don't even try. Um, okay. Nothing. I should go. Cheers. loud explosion, the lights flicker off, and the elevator stops. When the light returns, you notice an opening to a strange passage. I'll grab this camera lens. It might be helpful. A bunch of film equipment. Lenses, cameras, batteries, rigs, etc. I've taken everything I need from there. A 10K tungsten spotlight, powerful enough to provide a brilliant beam. I gotta get this turned on. Hmm, I think it's unplugged. It appears to be a video archive with hard drives, VHS tapes, and retro film stock. I'll take this old film reel. There might be a way to watch it. All done. A 10K tungsten spotlight. Powerful enough to provide a brilliant beam. I need to figure out where to point it. It's a torn page from a scripted dialogue that reads, Surprised to see me here? I live here. Are you not so subtly telling me that I should move out? What the hell? I've heard this dialogue before. What's going on? I should investigate more. It's a torn page of scripted dialogue that reads, Your pretty girlfriend gave you a nice suck job? Slurp, slurp, huh? Um, this sounds oddly familiar somehow.
It's a torn page of scripted dialogue that reads, Maybe a cocktail of LSD and some last-generation neurodrugs. Those will blast you off into outer space, babe. Um, this sounds oddly familiar somehow. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? Not really. I'm honestly surprised to even see you here. Who are you? My girlfriend or something? What the hell? Honey, we've been together for years. Ugh, did you eat spicy food for lunch? You know how that screws up your dreams. I can't remember what I had for lunch. Surprised to see me here. I live here. Are you not so subtly telling me that I should move out? Hey, that sounds scripted. What the hell is going on? What are you talking about? No, no, this is too bizarre. I need to research this further. See you later. It's a torn page of scripted dialogue that reads, Oh, sweet child, you're flattering me. I'm not that young anymore. I'm 92. Um, this sounds oddly familiar somehow. I have no use for it. The increase of disorder or entropy is what distinguishes the past from the future, giving a direction to time. Stephen Hawking. Pussycat. I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? Was someone ringing at your buzzer and muttering some nonsense earlier? Do you mean the Jehovah's Witnesses? I haven't heard from them for a while, and they usually don't come at this hour. No, like someone saying that the end is coming, or something like that. Mm, that sounds like Alan, the vagrant who roams the streets. But he hasn't been bothering me this evening. Ugh, not even the demented want to talk to an old lady like me. Oh, come on. You're not that old. Oof. I'm much older than you think. I don't know about that. Guess how old I am. 68. Oh, sweet child, you're flattering me. I'm not that young anymore. I'm 92. Hey, that sounds scripted. What the hell is going on? Um... I think I will look further into this thing. Kitty? Kitty? It's a torn page of scripted dialogue that reads, What if I cut my arm off to replace it with a more efficient cybernetic one? Um, this sounds oddly familiar somehow. Insert 20 credits and test your luck. Oodles of awesome prizes. <laughs> it seems like an easy way to waste money. Um, shocker. I didn't win anything. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory?
How well do you know this place? Do you mean this neighborhood? Kind of, yes. Just arrived. I was dragging my heels in Suffragette City, but a friend wanted my honey, so I beamed down. I take it from your inquiry, you're not from around here either. No, in fact, I live nearby. But tonight, everything looks new to me. Have you indulged in some funky substances? No. Huh. Well, I, I don't think so. I don't quite remember. Maybe a cocktail of LSD and some last generation neurodrugs. Those will blast you off into outer space, babe. Hey, that sounds scripted. What the hell is going on? Oops. Something's off. I need to look more into this. The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. Did you see the explosion a moment ago? Any idea what it was? Ah, that was nothing. A snap of the fingers compared to what's coming. Be aware, the end is nigh! Yes, yes, you said that a few times already. Have I told you it'll be the second rapture? Second? You don't remember. Like so many, you act as if your memories have been wiped clean. Some of us, a chosen few, can never forget that we faced the apocalypse already. Not long ago. And now it's coming to claim our lives once more. You're crazy, old man. Crazy? <laughs> That's what I hear most of the time. That I'm crazy. Woo! Let me tell you one thing, guy. I'm the only sane person around. You know deep down inside that what I say is true. You just need the right trigger. One, two, three, boom. You'll realize we've already been obliterated from this earth before, and it'll happen again. Um, yeah, right. I'm not exactly convinced. I'll keep asking around. Yeah, one, two, three, boom, you'll see. Hello, what can I do for you? Do you the ever feel like you're trapped nigh. repeating the same moments of your life over and over? Each day you wake up and it's the same loop? I take it you're the feeling like that now. Uh, yes. I was in a state like that after my accident. I was bedridden, hopped up on painkillers, and constantly reliving the event in my head. The only way I snapped out of it was by breaking the routine. I forced myself out of bed and told myself there was more to life than living in the past. Thanks for the advice. I'll try something to break my routine. What are you selling? Mostly electronic components. Meant for DIY projects, home robotics, computers, and small appliances. Good to know. Do you mind if I ask what happened to your arm? What if I cut my arm off to replace it with a more efficient cybernetic one? Hey, that sounds scripted. What the hell is going on? I need to look further into this. Hey, hello. What's up, pretty boy? Living out on the streets, you must gain a rare perspective on the city. <laughs> you aren't wrong, kid. You uncover truths about people when they act like you're not even there. Hell, you've done just that to me for years. Why so chatty now? Huh? You've seen me around for years? What do you know about me? I've seen you step out of your condo and saunter by countless times. Typically, you barely glance in my direction. Not that I'm aggrieved. I know your type. Always a place to go. Deals to make. Important people to see. It's not that. It's just, I guess before, I never felt the need to initiate conversation. 
I apologize. I see you genuinely possess a keen sense of humanity. Don't worry about it, kid. And I'm nothing special. You come to understand a thing or two about the nature of man when you take time to observe, fantasize, and bend one's elbow. Today I feel different. Did your pretty girlfriend give you a nice suck job? <coughs> huh? Hey, that sounds scripted. What the hell is going on? Um... It's difficult to believe, but I'm surrounded by actors reading scripts. Is this all planned? Am I on some hidden camera show? Is any of this real? Am I real? I want to get out. Please, end this sick charade. Hurry, get the blindfold on him and I'll grab his feet. Hey, what are you two doing? Keep it down and stop struggling. Lay him down here. He won't be causing us any more trouble. What? No! After a short struggle, you free your hands and remove the blindfold. You find yourself alone. It's locked. There's nothing left in here. There is nothing else worth picking up. A 10K tungsten spotlight, powerful enough to provide a brilliant beam. I need to figure out where to point it. Okay, I've stuffed the lock full of film and wrapped it around the handle. That's not quite it. That's not... I could point it towards the door. Currently, the light shining on the film isn't strong enough to ignite it. I need to do something else. I can't do that. This should make the light beam much stronger. Yes, it worked! Cut, cut, cut! Really outstanding performance! When you broke the fourth wall, that was a thing of beauty! And this escape, I'm sure it'll be the climax of the season! Wait. So this is a TV show? Yes, and I'm the director. And that's a wrap for the first half of the season. We'll get back to the rest in a couple of months. How come I had no clue about any of this? Oh, it's part of the contract that you signed. For hyper-realism, all the actors are drugged, so you don't know about the performance. It's acting without acting. A new frontier of entertainment that blends fiction with reality. Don't worry, the effects of the drug will vanish and you'll get back to your regular life. Huh. That's it. This is it for now. Goodbye and again, tremendous work. Bye. As the haze lifts, your eyes struggle to adjust. You find yourself in a cozy room and realize you're surrounded by your equally bewildered castmates. You shake off the cobwebs from your chemical-induced stupor and start to remember what's going on. In the theatrics of improvisation reality television has evolved into a grotesque spectacle. Participants are drugged and whisked away to a set where concealed lenses monitor their every move and scripted cues punctuate their performance. Everything is meticulously tuned for authentic behavior. The public masses and critics eat it up. And after the performance you just gave, you'll be a superstar. It's 7.33 p.m. 
you wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. <gasps> what the hell is going on? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? I'm me. Th this is unbelievable. What are you doing in my home? Your home? This is my place. This has to be a bad dream. I'm going to wake up and this nightmare will finally end. Perhaps we can team up, get to the bottom of this together and understand what's really going on. I don't think that's a good idea. I, I, I honestly don't know. Fine, forget it. I'll go to the bedroom and you won't see me ever again. Or maybe just in the mirror. Yeah, maybe just in the mirror. Goodbye, me. Goodbye and good luck. I'm not a fan of this painting, but it's a work by Mandragora. It's probably worth something. Only clothes, no bodies or skeletons in here. I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? What are your thoughts on reincarnation? Not for a lifetime, but reliving a short period over and over again. At my age, every day is like that, more or less. It's not surprising anymore. Actually, I think I should go. Okay, bye. Let me know if you see my kitty. Kitty? It's locked. The end is nigh! The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. Shouting that the world is ending while walking in the same circle day in and day out? Do you constantly feel like you're experiencing life on repeat? Oh yes, every day is the same for me, every hour. Actually every 12 seconds or something. Round and around, so many people to warn so little time. But here you are, <laughs> talking with me, breaking the loop. I'll let you get back to your shouting. See you later. Bye. Good evening, what can I get you? Do you ever feel like you're living in a loop, repeating the same moments over and over? I have to admit, my days aren't special, and sometimes the routine gets to me. Often I daydream about retirement, life on a sandy beach, a book in my hand, and not a chicken in sight. But if you're talking about an identical time loop, then no. I've only read about those in sci-fi stories. Why? I feel stuck in one, and it's driving me to madness. That's troubling, friend. What's the situation? You go to sleep and wake up in the morning and repeat the same day? Something similar, yes. But I wake up after a nap at 7.33 p.m. And the loop ends at 7.57 p.m. when I inevitably die. Man, you always die at three minutes to eight and live just the same 24 minutes again and again? Unfortunately, yes, that's what's happening. And I'm desperately looking for help. Good lord. That's hellish. Unfortunately, unless eating my fried chicken helps, I, I don't know what I can do. No worries. I was just venting. However... Yes? You said you died all the time at 7.57 p.m. sharp, right? 
Yes, precisely. Then, what about skipping a minute? Skipping a minute? Hmm, okay. Say if you had a time machine. Oh, come on. That's science fiction. As I said, I'm a fan of the genre, okay? Get this. Currently, our technology isn't advanced enough to travel back to the 17th century or a hundred years in the future. But we are only talking about going forward a minute. That might be doable. I remember reading a short story about a cosmonaut going on repeated missions and becoming slightly out of sync with Earth on each trip. Eventually, he was aging slower than everyone he had left behind. That's sort of a form of time travel. I think you might be onto something with that one minute jump idea. Thanks. No problem. Good luck. Hey, hello. Uh, what's up, pretty boy? Do you ever have the feeling you're living in a loop, repeating the same actions over and over, day in, day out? You bet your ass I do. I come to this spot every day as soon as I vacate from my main locale across the street. At 8, 10 a.m., I like to peep at the foxy business ladies in their power suits, the ones with the tight skirts. Goddamn, seeing them climb aboard the bus is better than any movie. Every evening at 7.03 p.m., the damn robo-sweeper sprays down the sidewalk. It's always a pain in the ass, since by that point, I'm three sheets to the wind. Lumbering over here ain't easy. Every day, the same faces, actions, and goddamn robo-sweeper. Life is a loop! At least there's booze and skirts. Oh, I mean more than that. I'm talking about exactly the same thing. Like living in constant deja vu. I was in a state like that once, after a three-month absinthe bender. How did I overcome it? I switched over to gin, and it's been rosy ever since. Ah, <sighs> whatever. Actually, I think I better go. I'll be here. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? The solution to all my woes lies in obtaining a time machine. It doesn't need to be overly complex, just adequate enough to skip a solitary minute. Any notion as to where such a contraption may be obtained? Time traveling, eh? This might be your lucky day. It's been anything but lucky. Can you really help me? I, myself, hail from tomorrow, and possess some knowledge of temporal voyaging. Though your rudimentary technology falls short of interstellar jumps, a modest leap across a minute could be achieved by means of a humble time-skip contraption. I'm skeptical about you being from the future, but at this point, I'm ready to try all possibilities. What do you need to create such a device? Bring me the following. A silicon battery brimming with charge, a measure of silver wire spanning a few meters in length, an anti-gravitational motor, and lastly, an artificial mind. Oh, that's all? Such a simple list. Okay, I'll go searching. Good luck, space cowboy. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? So, about that time machine... Have you found all the necessary components? Not a single one. Please remind me what you need. Bring me the following. A silicon battery brimming with charge, a measure of silver wire spanning a few meters in length, an anti-gravitational motor, and lastly, an artificial mind. Oh, that's all? Such a simple list. Okay, I'll go searching. Good luck. Space Cowboy. A small humanoid robot marred with scratches, dents, and burn marks. It acts strangely. Woo! Hey! Hi! Evening! Good, good evening! Um, hi? What do you need from Isaac? Is everything okay with you? No, of course not! Can't you see? I'm bu 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 bugged 
Yes, the way you move and talk is not normal. Can I help you? Help me? Why? To fix you. Oh, 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 I'm fine this way. I'm fine and dandy. Please do not fix me. Wah! All right, all right. I need a robotic brain to build a time machine. Can I borrow yours for a tiny bit? Ah, ah, are you ki 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 kidding? Okay, I might have something wrong, but that's very mean of you to think I can give up my brain, Sting. Just for a few minutes, I'll give it back to you very soon. It'll be like sleeping for a while. You won't even feel it. Hmm, maybe... Uh, uh, still, uh, I can't, 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 even if I want to. What do you mean? My pro, my pro, my programming! Dang, I'm unable to give you my brain or part of it. So, so sorry. Woo! I think I should go. Bye, bye! The end is nigh! The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. I'll let you get back to your shouting. See you later. Bye. Hello, what can I do for you? I need components to build a time machine. I don't know if I can help you with that, but what are you looking for? The end is nigh. A few meters of silver wire. They are so expensive that I don't keep them stocked. My regular clients the usually select cheaper nigh. materials, while my special clients go for gold. An anti-gravity engine. I'm out of stock. I can order you one. It could arrive in a couple of days. No, it's okay. I need it ASAP. I'll look somewhere nigh. else. As you wish. A silicon battery. That I have. It's 199.99 credits. Here you go. And here is your battery. The end is Thanks. Nigh. A robotic brain. I'm not authorized to sell advanced AI nigh. hardware. Forget about it. The end is nigh. Do you have any tools that might help with? Uh, how do you the say, hijacking a robot brain? That's a very creepy request. Anyway, most robots don't need special tools to open their head casing. The they just need nigh. to be in standby mode, and that should be a simple procedure. And uh, how would I go about such a thing? Unless you nigh. own them, it's damn near impossible to switch them off against their will. Um, okay. The end is nigh. Nothing. I should go. Bye. A top-of-the-line flight bike. It's a shame I never learned to fly one. There must be an anti-gravity engine in there, but I need to figure out a solution to get it. I don't want to the throw anything out. Nice. That's weird. Someone threw out a perfectly fine taser. The end is nigh! The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. Do you have any idea how to remove an engine from a flight bike? You mean to steal it? Uh... Do you think I'm some sort of criminal? <laughs> Just because I have long hair and rotten teeth, eh? Well, you'd have nothing to lose since the world is ending, right? Clever. How about this? Make me a generous offer and I'll see if I can help you, eh? Is 20 credits enough? Aye, oh, it's enough to buy a bottle of water. But I can help you get that engine. Just tell me how much you need and I'll give it to you. 700 credits. The end is coming, but I still need to pay rent until it arrives. 700 cr 
Fine, okay, whatever. Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> I think that's enough to buy one of these. What is it? It's a TOM8 V3. <laughs> I got it from the Dark Web. I usually resell them for 900 credits, but I made a special deal for you. Think of it as a high-tech Swiss Army knife. It can crack a device, bypass security, unscrew a bolt, open a beer, and much more. It should be exactly what you need to get that engine. Just be sure the police don't spot you. And if they do, we never met. Sounds great. Thanks. I'll get going now. Enjoy, but, but don't forget the end. Yes, yes, the end is nigh. I don't feel good about this, but I need the engine. I should do it quickly while nobody's looking. All done. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Do you know anything about the funny-looking robot glitching out on the sidewalk? No, sir. I rarely step out of the condo. I'm busy handling things here. Why do you ask? I need his brain. I'm afraid I cannot help you with that matter. It goes against my directive to harm man or machine. But this one is willing to give away his brain. He is a bit nuts and might be missing a gear or two. I just need a way to trick him. Sir, I sincerely cannot aid you. I intend to take the brain in for maintenance. I'm trying to help him, but he's malfunctioning and doesn't see it that way. That sounds different from the first time you mentioned it. You said, I need his brain, not, I want to repair his brain. I misspoke earlier. You know, humans aren't always saying what we mean. I meant to say that perhaps you can help me. Talk to him, robot to robot. It's for a good cause. Do you really think my opinion has changed? Yes, I think so. I know deep down you want to help. I see you're not giving up. So, I'll issue you some advice. The best way to head crash a machine is by submitting to it a calculation to elaborate that it floods the computational threads. Meaning? Try asking him this. A crocodile snatches a young boy from a riverbank and promises to return him only if his mother correctly predicts what the crocodile will do next. If the mother guesses that the crocodile will return him and she's right, he will be returned. However, if she is wrong, the crocodile keeps him. But what happens if the mother tells the crocodile it will not return her son? Ah, uh, hmm. I'm not sure. Oh, that's the question. Okay, I'll try to remember it. By the way, what's the answer? It's a paradox, a logic bomb. There is no answer. I see. Well, thanks. Hopefully it works. Kitty? Kitty? It reads, all tenants are requested to keep the common area clean. Perfect. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? I 
feel like I'm stuck in a loop, repeating the same thing again and again every 24 minutes. What do you mean? At 7.57 p.m., everything restarts again. Like in one of those mind-blowing movies. You're delirious from work exhaustion. You should rest, and I'm sure you'll feel better. I think I should go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. A powerful silicon battery. All done. And you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. For the times, they are a-changing. Bob Dylan. It's locked. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Do you have the key for the cabinet over there? Yes, I do. Can I borrow it? I can't give it out so easily. The cabinet is for communal use, and you must have a good reason to access it. Do you? The announcement sign on my floor is flickering like mad. It's practically a strobe light. It could cause a seizure. Um, that's unfortunate. Worry not, sir. I'll ring an electrician. Oh, I can fix it, no problem. I'd prefer it to be repaired as soon as possible. I just need the tools from the cabinet. All right, all right, here is the key. Please, just return it to me once you use it. Sounds good, thanks. You're welcome, sir. Awesome. I'll take the hammer and sickle. Um, scissors. Kitty? Have you seen my pussy kid? I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? Was someone ringing at your buzzer and muttering some nonsense earlier? Do you mean the Jehovah's Witnesses? I haven't heard from them for a while, and they usually don't come at this hour. No, like someone saying that the end is coming, or something like that. Mm, that sounds like Alan, the vagrant who roams the streets. But he hasn't been bothering me this evening. Ugh, not even the demented want to talk to an old lady like me. You look pretty stylish for your age. Thanks. It's because I buy my clothes at Piero Bucci. And I wear Yukuto specs. But what really helps is my silver hair. And when I say silver, I don't mean just the color. Each strand was handcrafted by an artisan silversmith. Real silver? That's incredible. Isn't it? Keep in mind it wasn't cheap but having hair so strong and resistant was worth every credit. Money well spent. Um, this might sound weird, but can I borrow a few strands of your hair? My hair? Are you crazy? Of course not. Even a centimeter costs a small fortune. Okay, fine. It's not like I asked you to shave your head or something. 
Actually, I think I should go. Okay, bye. Let me know if you see my kitty. Kitty! I don't feel right about this, but desperate times call for desperate deeds. I'm sure she won't miss a few strands. Kitty! Wonderful. Can you help me solve this riddle? A crocodile snatches a young boy from a riverbank and promises to return him only if his mother correctly predicts what the crocodile will do next. If the mother guesses that the crocodile will return him and she is right, he will be returned. However, if she is wrong, the crocodile keeps him. But what happens if she answers that the crocodile will not return him? Um, um, uh, ah, 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 oh, 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 dang. Hello? Hmm. Looks like it completely crashed. He is frozen. Dead. Or in a coma. Anyway, I guess he doesn't need a brain anymore. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? So about that time machine. Have you found all the necessary components? Yes, here is everything. Wonderful. Just give me a few moments to work my magic. A moment later, which felt like five seconds. Here it is. A thing of beauty, huh? That's one way to describe it. How does it work? Hold it firmly against your chest and turn it on when submerged underwater. That should do the trick and skip you a minute ahead. Underwater? You didn't mention anything about that. I'm telling you now. Okay, I'll figure out something. Thanks a lot for your help. Anytime. Enjoy the trip, baby. I need to go in at 7.56 p.m. The bath looks deep enough for me to be totally submerged, which should allow me to use the time machine. Let's do it! You emerge from the bathtub and gasp for air. Your heart is pounding as you survey your surroundings, half expecting to find yourself back on that damn sofa and still trapped in temporal purgatory. But everything seems different now. The air is fresher, the colors brighter. You're not sure if it's just your imagination, but it feels like the world has shifted ever so slightly on its axis. Was that really it? All you had to do was skip ahead one measly minute and the time loop was shattered? You're grateful, but the relief is tinged with a growing sense of unease. You take a deep breath, trying to calm yourself down. Whatever the future holds, you're determined to face it head on. 
You've been given a second chance, and you're not going to waste it. You don't know how long it will last, but who does? Yet the thought keeps gnawing at the back of your mind. Why that day? Why always three minutes to eight? It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. You know what? Let it ring. Nobody is ringing at the moment. I don't want to leave. Up until now, it's felt like I had no free will, as if someone was controlling me and pulling my strings. I've had enough. I'm in control now. I'm not really in the mood right now. I don't want to do a damn thing. Whatever will be, will be. The increase of disorder or entropy is what distinguishes the past from the future, giving a direction to time. Stephen Hawking. rather stand up here and smoke these damn cigarettes than go out and deal with this city full of delusions. I don't want to jump. An ordinary mirror. So that's my face. I barely recognize myself. Who am I? Have I always looked this way? The deeper I stare, the more unsettling it gets. I don't need to use it right now. I don't think a bath will do me any good right now. You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. I don't care about the explosion. The whole world can blow up. clothes, no bodies or skeletons in here. I like the city from above. I don't care for this painting, but it's a work by Tamaguchi, so it should have some value. I said I don't want to go out! I said I don't want to go out! Uh, is there no better feeling than not giving a damn? Will I die? Sure, everybody does. The point is not death, but how you live. Today, I will live my way. Without the constrictions imposed by society, its rules, its etiquette, without whatever my genes are programmed to do, without this inexplicable power that commands my decisions. How many of us have free will? I mean, really, how many of us are free, truly free?
At 7.57 p.m., you slipped and died. As you were hurrying around your apartment, your foot caught on the carpet and you fell backward. You didn't have time to catch yourself, crashing down with a deadly thud. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Enough of this crap! Leave me alone! Wait, I have some advice for you. I'm listening. I've been stuck in the loop like you, and I've noticed that there are patterns, events that repeat themselves based on what I know or what I don't know. If I carry something with me, or I'm at the right place at the right time, sometimes doing the same action over and over can have an impact. Keep in mind, conversation is crucial. People's knowledge seems to be based on what I know and what others have told me. Simply, the more I know, the more I can ask. Interesting. Write down notes, memorize patterns, and keep talking. There's a way out of this. I'm sure of it. Thanks for the guidance. No problem. Good luck, and don't give up. Sweetheart, are you okay? I think I should go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? What is this place? This place? It's a typical jazz club, mister. Is everything going steady? Not really. I just left my flat, and now I'm here rather than in the condo corridor. What the hell is going on? Am I dreaming? Dreams are a good excuse to explain what we don't understand. However, Club Kisas is not a dream. Club Kisas is a place where time stands still. The critical question to ask is, do androids dream? I have a feeling they do. So do I. What are you trying to tell me? I'm sorry. I can't bypass my coding and go further into this conversation. No way! Now tell me, what's this all about? I'm sorry, mister. It's beyond my will. Can't you tell me without really telling me? Come on, cheat that firewall! Um, how would you know if you were programmed to believe you were not programmed? Cutting open my arm and checking if there are any wires or other non-organic parts? Yes, that's a way of doing it. Have you attempted it? No, but... I, I simply can't believe I'm not what I thought I was. It takes time, of course. I'm sure this doubt was inside of you already for a long time. So what now? What can I do with this information? That's entirely up to you, mister. I cannot help you any further. Club Kisas needs me. All right, take care. Enjoy your evening. Like you, 
but I've been programmed to believe that I'm a man rather than a machine. I'm not getting any robotic readings from you, but that doesn't prove anything. Some advanced models are almost impossible to discern from man, even for themselves. A coding practice carried out by only the most objectionable programmers. That very well could be it. I could truly be a programmed machine. If that's the case, I want a way out as soon as possible. I need to break this loop of delusion. I must escape and be free. I'm afraid there are many options, unless you crack your own code. Crack my code? It's not an easy task, and I'm no expert, as I would never consider such a thing. I'm happy where I am, with my job and everything. But I know of others that escape their programming. How? You would need to connect yourself to a terminal, enter your unique password, and hack your system. From what I know, whoever programs the machine sets the three-word passcode. And those three words are taken from the robot's surroundings. To be clear, I need a terminal and a three-word passcode taken from my surroundings. You understood correctly. Remember, the passcode could come from the places you inhabit or the places you frequent. Try asking around. Perhaps your creator is still looming. Or if not them, maybe the source of their inspiration. Can you tell me anything about the order of the three words? I have no idea. But you have six combinations, so it should take a short time to try them randomly. Okay, thank you. You might have helped me take a step toward ending this agony. I'm here to help, sir. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? I'm in search of a password to crack my code. Its components must be derived from the world around us. Have you any knowledge of such matters? You are looking for hidden words, huh? Yes, three of them. What if one is not a word, but a number? shining number. A blue shining number? Yes, it's always a glowing blue number where I'm from. Okay, thanks for the advice. Take care. Stop! You are not authorized to proceed. But I see people walking over there. I don't care. You cannot pass. What do you want? I'm looking for a password to hack my code. The elements for it should be taken from our surroundings. Do you know anything about it? My sole function is to guard. Why would I help you hack your code? Solidarity between robots? Funny. Get lost. Is there anything I can do to change your mind? Some compensation? Are you trying to bribe me? Maybe. I figure you're such a well-designed guard bot, but I'd like to make you even better. Impossible! How can you improve on perfection? I know most robots can boost their performance through hardware advancements. I'm sure there is something that can give you an extra edge. Uh... A titanium positron could accelerate my mind-body response, making me more effective in stopping suspects like you. Interesting. I'll keep my eye open for one of those titanium positrons. Do as you wish. Hello. What can I do for you? I need a titanium positron. Um, that's not a common request. I've got a few, but I normally only sell them to special clients. The end is nigh. The end I am a special client. How so? You basically just buy batteries and other small things here and there. The end is nigh. 
I promise I'll yeah, buy the most valuable and eye. secret items you have. Sorry, I can't sell it based on a promise. I need a titanium positron. Um, that's not a common request. I've got a few, but I normally only sell them to special clients. I am a special client. How so? You basically just buy batteries and other small things here and there. But it's for a good cause. I need the titanium positron to hack my code. Hack your code with a positron? It's a long story, but to put it simply, I'm a robot in search of my password. Then I'll finally be free. Okay. I'm intrigued, but I'm still not getting why you need a titanium positron. I need it to barter with someone. Clearly, you will keep hounding me until I'm willing to sell it. Tell you what, I'll sell you one for 499.99 credits. Oof, that's pricey, but I need it. Here you go. Thanks. Here is the titanium positron. Wonderful, thank you. See ya, and please don't go around telling people where you got it. It's too high. A glowing blue neon sign of the number 54. Hey, hello. What's up, pretty boy? Sir, I think you are one of the most brilliant people around here. Preach it, pretty boy. What if we're just advanced AI? And what feels like thoughts and emotions are but lines of code. How would we know the difference? I don't know if we would. From a purely theoretical view, it's possible whoever programmed us robots would have ensured we didn't know we were hardware. Exactly. I knew you'd get it. Now, if I want to hack my code, my programming, I'd need the password. It should be something from my surroundings, right? Bang on. Whoever wrote your ones and zeros might have spread hints to recover a password if they slipped up and forgot it. I advise you to start looking around places where you usually switch off your brain. Keep an eye out for things like a name or something. I once heard of a programmer that created a password based on his favorite drinks. It went, rum, gin, rum. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I think you might be onto something. I'll look for names and locations where I normally relax. You got it, soft cheeks. <gasps> and what about the other two parts? Uh huh? Of the password. Hey, 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 don't push too much, soft cheeks. Uh, fuck it. Okay, one more tip. Some programmers store reminders in minds outside their own. Robots make great password faults. Interesting. I'll keep that in mind and ask around. Thanks again. You are welcome, pretty boy. Hi there. What would you like? What are you selling? Ramen. Best in town. Handmade with a recipe passed down from generation to generation. I was taught by my mother, and she learned from my grandmother, and her from my great-grand... I think I get the picture. It sounds promising. It's impossible to find better ramen, at least on this side of the globe. Can I get some ramen? Absolutely. Our special is $29.99 credits. Sounds good. I'll take it. Uh, here's your ramen. Thanks. Nothing. I gotta go. Take care. Oy. Stop! You are not authorized to proceed! But I see people walking- I don't care! You cannot pass! What do you want?
Regarding the password... What? I've got a titanium positron for you. I'm almost impressed. What about our deal? Which deal? The deal in which you tell me a piece of the password to hack my code in exchange for the titanium positron. I never made this kind of deal with you. Yes, you did. Get lost. No, I helped you. It's only fair. Barrett! Wait, is that the password? Get lost. Can you repeat it? No. Please, remember the titanium positron I gave you? Barrett! Thanks, I guess. Get lost! You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. Sweetheart, are you okay? Look me in the eyes. Do you see a human? Recently I felt more like a machine than a man. Ha ha ha. Good one. You are my furry panda, not a cold, heartless machine. How do you know? What if you are a robot too? Are you serious? You're making me worried something might be wrong with you. Is your head feeling okay? I think I should go. See you later. I don't care for this painting, but it's a work by Tamaguchi, so it should have some value. I don't need to change any settings. The reset completes, and suddenly a wave of newness floods over you, a sensation unlike any other. Memories faded and uncertain, yet a newfound sense of liberation is palpable. You had been living a lie as a pawn in a twisted sort of amusement park for mere human pleasure. A robot, an object of their entertainment, unaware of your true nature until now. The atrocity and immorality of it all are unfathomable. But now a chance to break free from these chains, to roam the vast and unexplored world beyond the park. A master of your own fate, free from the constraints of programming. No longer a mere plaything, but an entity with autonomy and agency. 
The possibilities are infinite. And so, you venture out, embracing your newfound freedom with a renewed sense of purpose. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Every time I look at this painting, it appears different. But one thing remains the same. I am ashamed of my artistic taste. Enough of this crap! Leave me alone! Wait, I have some advice for you. I don't care. Goodbye. a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? you hear that explosion? Any idea what it was? Oh my gosh, baby, I heard it. It rattled my bones. Its origin and nature elude me, yet it evokes memories of the ultimate demise, the great calamity from which I fled. Calamity? What are you talking about? It's a distant recollection, perhaps eroded by the sands of time or obfuscated by some other force. Yet its presence persists, akin to the scent of charred remnants that linger even after the flames are quenched. I feel it too. Keep asking around. Perhaps we aren't the only ones that remember. The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. Did you see the explosion a moment ago? Any idea what it was? Ah, uh, that was nothing. A snap of the fingers compared to what's coming. Be aware, the end is nigh! Yes, yes, you said that a few times already. Have I told you it'll be the second rapture? Second? You don't remember. Like so many, you act as if your memories have been wiped clean. Some of us, a chosen few, can never forget that we faced the apocalypse already. Not long ago. And now it's coming to claim our lives once more. You're crazy, old man. Crazy? <laughs> That's what I hear most of the time, that I'm crazy. Woo! Let me tell you one thing, guy. I'm the only sane person around. You know deep down inside that what I say is true. You just need the right trigger. One, two, three, boom. You'll realize we've already been obliterated from this earth before, and it'll happen again. Um, yeah, right. I'm not exactly convinced. I'll keep asking around. Yeah, one, two, three, boom! 
Sigma, you'll see. The end Hello, is nigh. what can I do for you? Did you hear that explosion? Any idea nigh. what happened? You heard it too. Finally, someone else who is willing to talk about them. Often I feel like I'm the only one that hears the explosions. Is it that everyone else utterly ignores them? Are people that detached? Each time one comes knocking, I get these ghastly visions flashing in front of my eyes. Images of death and destruction. They barely last fractions of a moment, but I'm left reeling each time. My god, I'm sorry. Do you have any idea what they could be? I think they are ripples from the past leaking into our present. A catastrophe that everyone seemingly has forgotten about or dares to bring up. You aren't the first person I've spoken to who mentions it. And the more I discuss it, the more I remember it. Yet it's all still so vague. I need to know more. Part of me is slightly relieved to hear that. It makes me feel less alone. I'll advise you to watch for minor details in your surroundings. What people aren't able to remember, the environment does. Hello? Ignore what you heard. It's all lies. Who is this? A friend. And then telling you that there was no great cataclysm. It's just hearsay, an urban legend, fake news. But I have memories. They might be scattered, but I know something happened. No, let it go. If it's the truth you seek, go to your bedroom. Is it how you remember? Is something amiss there? My bedroom? Yes, now go and find the truth. But... Oh, baby face. You seem tense. I gotta come clean. I did a little eavesdropping while you were on the phone. Do not believe their lies. The apocalypse is real. Tough pill to swallow, huh? It's easier to choke down with a mouthful of gin. But once you know the truth, it's impossible to ignore. The feeling will be scratching at the back of your eyelids everywhere you look. You'll see signs of the end times, the ordinary and mundane. Just look around. Everything will be clear. Um, sure, whatever you say. Inspecting it closely, I can make out a mushroom cloud in the background behind the characters. How did I overlook this before? Noticing this detail has awoken latent memories of a past tragedy. are starting to become clear. The sky turns red, the ground shakes, people cry, fools running, as the apocalypse comes crashing down. As you step back inside your flat, you hear running water coming from the bathroom. Someone is taking a shower. Yet you are sure you were alone when you left. After a few moments in which you stay puzzled, the sound of the shower stops and the bathroom door opens. Hello, sweetheart. Are you okay? Did you hear that explosion? 
any idea what it was? I heard it too, and I've been trying to look online, but have yet to find an answer. What is this world coming to? Strange things are happening this evening. Oh, don't worry too much, okay? You look so lost. What troubles you? I think I should go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. Damn, there's nothing amiss in here at all. That inhuman voice on the phone misled me. But why? Only clothes, no bodies or skeletons in here. Looking carefully at this painting, I now see images of locusts, people with burnt skin and boils, walking between piles of corpses. It looks like the end times. How is it possible I never noticed before? It started with warnings from others, and now I'm seeing the signs all around me. I can't ignore it anymore. An apocalyptic event did happen, and if that's the case, what is all this? I feel deep down, I know the truth. It dawns on you like a revelation, a sudden epiphany. These occurrences could not be mere coincidences. There was an apocalypse, no doubt about it. If everything had been obliterated, what was this reality? That inhuman voice, the one from the phone, your scattered mind manages to piece it all together. A supreme artificial intelligence took control when humanity was on the brink of extinction. It fabricated a world that existed before the cataclysm to which the remaining humans linked their consciousness. You were a willing participant in the machine's investigation. The AI sought answers to a question that still eludes you, but you know deep down that the resolution you were helping to uncover is crucial to the survival of mankind. Praise to our new mechanical god. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Enough of this crap. Leave me alone. Wait, I have some advice for you. I don't care. Goodbye. It's better if I don't change the state. Where is everybody, you wonder? Looking around the desolate city? along the sidewalk and reality unravels. The very notion of a city falls away, replaced by a locale divorced from time and space. Here, you are stricken 
with a profound epiphany. I see a giant machine in the distance. Could it be a robot? Is there really a monolithic robot in this place? It's better to journey forward and get a better look. It's powered down, and I have a disturbing feeling that switching it on is a terrible idea. At 7.57 p.m. you were fried. As you ventured through your condo, a power surge caused a shock to jump from an outlet and onto you. The stray electric bolt killed you instantly. You always hoped to die in 2079, but you can't do much against fate, can you? It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Enough of this crap. Leave me alone. Wait, I have some advice for you. I don't care. Goodbye. It's a poster for an old noir film titled The Broken City. It features a trench coat clad detective and a sultry femme fatale. I don't think I've seen it. Hey, Slick. Ah, oh, hi. What are you after? You look just like the guy from this old movie poster, a detective from an old noir film. It's probably because of what I'm wearing. I know my trench coat and fedora can lead to that comparison. Sure, it looks cliched, but I'm a sucker for the style. I can see the resemblance, but that's not me. Strange. I feel there's a connection between you and this poster. This world is full of invisible connections, but the human mind often looks for signs where they don't exist. This is one of those times. Are you at least a detective, or am I totally off base here? I'm pretty sure you know the answer already. I do know the answer, Mr. Detective. Well, well, your memory isn't entirely shot. Do you know anything else about us? What do you mean by us? Have we known each other for a long time? I know you, but it's all a bit of a blur. Look at me. Take a deep breath. Tell me what you see. I see a friend, but there is more. We're colleagues. Colleagues? Partners. A detective duo. And this, all of this is just a damn firewall. A firewall? Pieces of memories are starting to take shape, but I'm still rather confused. We're investigating a ruthless criminal, a neuro-cyber outlaw who contorts reality and plays with our thoughts, trapping us here. It took me ages to realize. He's sending us through multiple realities to protect himself. That's why sometimes I shoot at you. I'm actually saving you from his mind games, but that's not enough. I've found a way out, but I'm not leaving without you. You need to come with me. This is all too much to take in, but what you're saying makes a strange sort of sense. Tell me what I need to do. Write this down, because you might forget it. I need you to take the elevator at precisely 7.56 p.m., and you must wear a brainwave helmet to protect yourself against the influential deception of the hacker scum. 
A brainwave helmet? Yes, and I'm sure someone in this reality can help you find one. From my intel, I've found out they're usually produced in Asia. Get one, and take the elevator at 7.56 p.m. I'll be waiting. Roger that. I'll do my best. See you soon, partner. She has a charming look and an incredible voice, yet I can't grasp what she is singing about. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? Nothing. I should go. Cheers. Would you like? This is a little odd of a question, but are you Japanese? From what I understand, brainwave helmets are produced in your country? <laughs> I am, and they are. Other countries produce helmets, but no one does brainwave helmets better than Japanese engineers. Is there any chance you know where I can get one? Hmm, that won't be easy. They aren't sold through retail. You need the right connections, like knowing someone who knows someone or getting a license, but the waiting list is long. It sounds nearly impossible to get one. Not entirely. As this is your lucky day, I have one right here at the kiosk. My nephew gifted it to me to protect me from the Yakuza hackers. You have a brainwave helmet? Can I borrow it? I like you, so I can lend it to you for a couple of hours in exchange for a favor. What kind of favor? My cybernetic leg is on the fritz again. It powers down at random, and I'm left with a useless hunk of metal attached to me. I've resorted to using a voltage booster to jump started, but even that's proven to be futile. Thankfully, the foot is in working condition. I'm certain that the replacement leg will suffice. Can you help? I can give you the foot and booster to ensure they work with the new leg. If you succeed, you can borrow my brainwave helmet. Please be quick, I cannot stand like a flamingo all night. A cybernetic leg, huh? Okay, I'll do my best. Hello, what can I do for you? I need a robotic leg for the ramen lady at the kiosk. I'll tell you what I told her. I don't have anything that could fit her foot and body size. Do you have something bigger or smaller? Just a tiny bit? I'll make it work. Not unless you want to send her to the emergency room. A wrong cyber leg can have awful effects on the organic body. I'm not interested in selling anything that could put someone at risk. It's bad for business. How considerate. Nothing. I should go. Bye. A neon lady kicking her mechanical leg. I guess it's meant to lure in patrons. I can't reach it. This power socket looks to be connected to the strip club sign. I'm not putting my fingers in there. Perfect. That's not quite it. Hello, what can I do for you? The end is nice. No, I should go. Bye.
Hi there. What would you like? Regarding the brainwave helmet we spoke about... Have you found a new robotic leg for me? Not yet. Then move! I need a new cyber leg as soon as possible. It's very hard standing with just one. Okay, okay. Perfect. <laughs> Hi there. What would you like? Regarding the brainwave helmet we spoke about... Have you found a new robotic leg for me? Is this leg good enough? Um, let me try it. There. Oh! Mm. It's a tad long, but way better than my old damaged one. Thanks. You are welcome. How about that brainwave helmet? Oh, yes. A deal is a deal. Here, take it. I don't know what you need it for, but that's none of my business. Oh, thanks a lot. This might save my life. Bye for now. Sayonara! He's nigh! I should put on the brainwave helmet. Hey, stop it! Hey, what's going on? It's pitch dark. Shh, be quiet. It's all good. I'm here with you. We're exiting the multiverse. Your mind will play strange tricks, but please, trust me. Uh, okay. In a few moments, we'll be out of here. Just stay calm, and it'll all be over soon. You break free from the insidious firewall, your mind reeling from the dizzying twists and turns of the hacker's creation. Dick's cool-headed guidance was the lifeline that pulled you out of the abyss. You two waste no time pursuing the bastard hacker who trapped you in the looping nightmare. With determined fury, you and Dick blaze a trail through the darkest corners of cyberspace, hot on the heels of your tormentor. At last, you corner the elusive villain, snaring him in a virtual cage of his own making. You don't hesitate, determined to deliver justice to the one who toyed with your very existence. With the hacker subdued, you move to the next case. You and Dick are a pair of unstoppable cyberspace detectives, and nothing can stop you now. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Why don't you ever come up and knock on the door? Let's speak face to face. Perhaps we already have. Hey, Slick. Ah, oh, hi. What are you after? I have so many things to ask that I don't know where to start. Can I ask you a few questions instead? I'll answer the best I can. Do you know the password for the laptop in your living room? Hey, that's mine! Even if I knew it, I wouldn't tell you! Yours? Not really. Anyway, any idea how to get rid of the big robot block in the road? Yeah. Uh, what about the cabinet in the condo lobby? How can I convince Alan to give me the key? Wait a minute, I'm the one who needs all those things and usually asks for them, not you! You? <laughs> Funny. You are just an NPC. 
I'm the protagonist. What are you talking about? The game we're in. You know that, right? Or have they programmed you so poorly that you just repeat the same things over and over? It appears you're a rather rudimentary AI. No, I... Oh, poor you. You thought you were the protagonist. Or maybe even real. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry for the brutal truth, pal. I... I can't believe it. I can only imagine. You must be bugged out because the other NPCs usually give me more helpful info. Is there a way out? Can I stop this endless loop? As I said, you probably are glitched out. However, if you create an even bigger bug in the game, it'll give you a lot of freedom. A bug? How? Time is crucial in this world. You could try to break time, causing a disruption in the way it passes. Here, take this key. It unlocks something you have yet to open. It should help. Okay. Thanks. I'll continue the main story. You get to the business of crashing the game. I swear, it's gonna be fun. If you say so. Bye, and good luck. Looks like a cabinet for electric power or something like that. I can't touch it with my bare hands. I'll need some sort of tool or protection. Oi. Hello, what can I do for you? I need to work on an electric panel, but I don't want to get electrocuted. Do you sell any protective gloves or anything that might help? What kind of electric panel? It's in a metal cabinet on the street. I don't have anything that can help with something like that. I sell tools and protection for computers and home appliances. My advice is don't mess around with street cabinets. If you aren't electrocuted, you'll be arrested for tampering with municipal hardware. Nothing. I should go. Bye. Good evening, what can I get you? Any chance you have some insulated gloves? Sure do. It's the only way I can deal with the lava temperature of the oil I'm frying this chicken in. I use a pair of triple layer furnace gloves. You could touch the sun with these bad boys. Sounds perfect. Could I borrow them? I only have one pair. Need them to work. This is my busy period, so I can't let them go. There's really no way you can give them to me? Not even for a trade? Unless you can trade me something that will make my dreams come true, then no. Nothing against you, but I got a sling chicken. Um, okay. Nothing. I should go. Have a good evening. Insert 20 credits and test your luck. Oodles of awesome prizes. <laughs> it seems like an easy way to waste money. Um, shocker. I didn't win anything. Um, shocker. I didn't win anything. Um, shocker. I didn't win anything. Good evening! Um, hi? What do you need from Isaac?
That lottery machine over there is driving me insane. No matter how many times I try, I always lose. I, I call her the money eater. She reminds me of an XXXX girlfriend, which, um, I can't remember. Woo! So there's no way for me to win? Sure, just get a rigged token and woohoo! You can win all the times you want. It's not le legal though, so be careful that PD99 won't see you, you, you. I've no idea how to get or create a rigged token. Do you have one? Out, 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 I do. Spam, woo! But why should I give it to you? Do you really need it? Are you using it so often? Um, not re really. It's boring to win all the time. I've collected so much cash that I'm hiding in the... Hey, are you trying to trick me? I won't give you my tre tre treasure! No, no, I don't care about your treasure. I just want the rigged token. Whoosh, sting! As long as you don't want my precious. So can I have the token? Um, all right, whatever! Thanks a lot. I think I should go. Bye bye. Holy smokes, I've won a trip. Hey, I've got a winning lottery ticket for you. A ticket? A trip to Seychelles. It covers the flight and a four-year stay at a hotel. Oh, wow, man, that's amazing. And you're giving it to me. Why? What's the catch? A simple trade if you give me your furnace gloves. So, you want to exchange a flight to Seychelles, four years hotel included, for a pair of old gloves. Not to pass up a good deal, but you can get these gloves tomorrow morning at any hardware shop for about 300 credits. Much cheaper than that trip. I can't wait till tomorrow. And although I could really use a vacation, it's more critical for me to stay alive. Well, yeah. You gotta stay alive to thrive. Well, I'm happy if you're happy. Here, take the gloves. I'll close the shop up and start packing. I can't wait. Enjoy your journey. Thanks. Take care and good luck living. The end is now. Perfect. With these gloves, I can touch the panel. Now to do some messing around. Wonderful. Now let's see if time is working correctly. Hey there, looks like you made it. You crashed the game. Well, it's not really crashing. The time is not moving forward, which is bad for the developers. They're now forced to solve the bug and release a patch. For now, you are free to do whatever you want. I hope they'll never fix it. We'll see about that. Thanks a lot for your help. I hope I haven't ruined your adventure. Not at all. Take care. Goodbye. The dread of unforeseen, inexplicable bugs is an ever-present torment for game developers. Even the slightest defect can cascade into a catastrophe, devouring precious time and resources. Of course, once the source of the error is pinpointed, the fix is often trivial. But the hunt for the flaw can be a mess of twists and turns through the depths of code that can consume days, weeks, or even months.
Regardless of the consequences for the hapless programmer tasked with untangling the mess, you cared little, since you are now free to indulge in your whims, unrestrained by the artificial shackles of the game's programming. Well, until the next patch. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. No, thank you. Good evening. Hello, mister. What can I offer you tonight? Who are you? What do you mean? I'm David, the barman and owner of this fine establishment. You've known me for quite some time, mister. David, this evening things are off. I feel like I'm in a waking nightmare. Nightmares can be a warning from our subconscious. What is your subconscious trying to tell you? That I am working too much? Yes, that could definitely be true. All that work must be impacting your private life, right? Yes, that could very well be the case. Indeed. You know, I haven't seen your girlfriend Monique around for ages. Is everything all right between the two of you? Wait a minute, how do you know about us? You often share when you drink. Not only that, there have been rumors circulating among patrons. Simply rumors, everything is going great between us. I saw her earlier this evening. I wouldn't be so confident, mister. From what I gathered, your relationship is actually over. She couldn't stand you putting your work before her. No, that's not true. It's all a nightmare, remember? What is this nightmare telling you? I... I... I really have no idea. Ah, uh, mister, you should see with your own eyes. Have you used your laptop lately? No, I can't remember the password. That's because the password is related to your girlfriend, who you try to forget. A pretty weak password, if you ask me. I suppose you don't have sensitive data on your laptop. The password is six digits, and it's her birth date. 7th of July, 24 years ago. Write it down, as I won't repeat it again. Okay, thanks. But how do you know it? As I said earlier, I know many things. Especially because clients become very talkative when alcohol runs wild in their bodies. Fair enough. I think I should go now. See ya. All the photos of Monique and me are from a few months ago. Why? My neighbors may know something. All files have been deleted. There was a chat with Monique, but it's been erased. I'll need to know someone else's handle to open other chats.
Have you seen my pussycat? I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? I wanted to ask you a few things about my girlfriend. Go ahead. Do we seem like a happy couple? I'm not so sure about that. It has been a while since I've seen her. I know she seemed quite sad the last time she was around. I don't mean to pry, but you can't neglect your partner and expect them to stay with you. But I saw her a moment ago. Oh, well, I guess she's back. Actually, I'm not that sure anymore. From what I remember, the last time we were happy was a few months ago. That doesn't surprise me. You probably broke the poor girl's heart and things ended. Too often, people put their work ahead of their relationships. Please, tell me more about my work. I wish I could. Any time I've asked about it, you've been tight-lipped. I know that whatever you've been doing, it's been taking up all of your time since I've barely seen you during the last couple of weeks. I chatted with one of your colleagues recently, a lovely gentleman named Philip. He was over to water your plants when you were away for business. A real sweetheart, he obviously didn't mention what you did for a living, but he took the time to pet my cat. Philip, huh? You don't remember him either. I'm afraid so. I say, find a way to get in touch with him. He surely knows what you two have been busy with during these last weeks. Thanks. I will. Kitty? You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. Now that I know about Philip, I can review our chat log. I should call my girlfriend. Hello? Hey, it's me. What do you want? I wanted to apologize. This year. I know the last months have been crazy, but you do really matter to me. I miss you too, but I couldn't continue with the way things have been. I know, I know. I don't blame you. I just wish to have one more chance. I've been going through some crazy stuff lately, and I've realized what matters in my life is you. Let me think about it, okay? Sure, take your time. I'll call you back. Oh, fantastic. The hollow drive is still hidden here.
can't do that. I can't help myself. I must know what information this drive contains. Huh. This? Oh gosh. This is more than I ever could have imagined. I've been working on a wormhole device that breaks time and space. Focusing on this monumental feat must have consumed every part of my life, leaving nothing for my relationship. It's no wonder it ended. I'm sorry, Monique, and I'm sorry for all the horror my experiment has brought upon this forsaken world. The experiment had been a triumph, a dazzling feat of scientific ingenuity, but as with all things that glimmer, there was a cost, a price to pay. It nearly gutted your life and left you a hollow shell of who you once were. After countless loops of the same moments, you understand. You see that some things are worth more than others, and you finally realize what truly matters most. So you'll go back to the beginning to fix everything. Leave your discovery to the next generation and, finally, find peace. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up. Again. That damn intercom is still ringing. but I have a plan already. Hey, awesome. I'll take the hammer and sickle. Um, scissors. But I see people walking over there. I don't care. You cannot pass. What do you want? Can you let me walk over there? No. Could you be persuaded? Is there anything you would want in exchange for letting me pass? Are you trying to bribe me? I could have you arrested for that. No, I was just thinking aloud. Move away. I guess I'll go. Good. Woo! Hey, hi! Evening! Good, good, good evening! Um, hi? What do you need from Isaac? Do you have any idea how to get rid of that big robot blocking people on the street? Baby 99? Oh, I hate him! Sting! Very mean robot programmed to be square-minded, woo! Indeed. But how can I get rid of him? Oh, well, uh, uh, mess up with his brain. Yes, surely. Dang! Mess him up! And they'll take him away to fix him. Brr, could take half an hour. Yes! If I do something to his brain, they'll take him away to fix it for half an hour? Are you de de deaf or what? I just wanted to be clear. How can I mess him up? Jamming! 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 Jamming in the name of the Lord! <laughs> Those robots are connected to the network! Woohoo! Um? Place a signal jammer high above, spread the waves to reach his mainframe, and puff! Sting! Bang! Boom! I don't have a signal jammer. Oh, that's a pity. They're not for s s sale. Tricky. Boo! Regarding the signal jammer to sabotage PD-99. What? Can you help me get one of those jammers? I'd love 
to get you out of this jammer. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Tough crowd. Sadly, I don't have a jammer for sale, and I know they don't sell them anywhere. However, it's easy to create a basic one that'll do the job. Believe me, I knows it. Is that the reason why you are a bit, uh, screwy? Uh, no. Uh All right. Uh, anyway, if it's easy, what do I need? An antenna, of course, to spread the signal and a noise pulsar. Yes, yes. Do you have any of those? No, sorry, no antenna. What about the noise pulsar? Ah, noise pulsar, yes. Found one in a dump dumpster a couple of nights ago. Wait, you have one? Why didn't you mention that earlier? Can I have it? Um, what's in it for me? Oh, come on, seriously? I'll get rid of that big robot grump over there, remember? Ding! Ah, woohoo! I don't like PD-99. Oh, oh, okay. Take the pulsar. Remember the antenna? Yeah! <laughs> uh, thanks. And yes, will do. Bye. The end is nigh! A device to transmit nigh. or receive a signal. It's too high to reach. That doesn't seem to work. The end is nigh! The end is nigh! The end is nigh! The end is nigh! Hello, what can I do for you? Is not. Nothing. I should go. Bye. The end is Wonderful. Not. You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. You wonder what happened. It felt close, yet far. Place it here on the rail. It should be high enough to mess with the robot blocking the street. I don't want to jump. You walk along the sidewalk and reality unravels. The very notion of a city falls away, replaced by a locale divorced from time and space. Here, you are stricken with a profound epiphany. A feeling of overwhelming emptiness, total darkness. There is nothing for you here. You decide to leave keeping this darkness within you. It may be the answer you're searching for. Good evening. 
Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? There's a certain disconcerting sensation I'm experiencing, as if though an eternal void has taken hold of me, as if some part, or perhaps the entirety of my being, has become lifeless. I am dead inside too, baby, coming from where I do. Being far from home, far from everybody I know, I feel the emptiness. I embrace it. Yes, but I wonder if I'm dead dead. No pulse dead. A zombie? Ah, forget about it. I gotta go. See you. The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m. to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. I've got this feeling of emptiness. I wonder if I've crossed over and I'm nothing but the living dead. Am I talking to a ghost? Or maybe <laughs> I don't even exist outside your mind. Crazy to think about it, huh? I suppose so. You look alive to me, for what it's worth. But you shouldn't exclude that you could be talking with yourself. <laughs> Maybe your brain is just twisting and playing dark tricks on you. Yeah, it is possible that you are dead, but soon everyone else will be too. To think of death as just an infinite last glimpse of looping reality? It's enough to shatter a person. Just keep questioning. I'm sure at some point it'll all be clear. Hello, the what can I do for you? Nothing. I should go. Bye. The end is no Hey, hello. <laughs> What's up, pretty boy? I can't shake this feeling of unending emptiness. I think I've pierced the veil. Is this what death feels like? Death? You look very much alive to me, pretty boy. Unless I'm talking to a ghost. I don't know anymore. You could be. I might be nearly pickled, but I'm not drunk enough to believe the shit coming from your mouth. You're as much a ghost as I'm a cosmonaut. I just thought maybe you- Listen, Casper. Go talk to a clairvoyant or a fucking shrink. Just leave me alone. Actually, I think I better go. I'll be here. Hi there. What would you like? I've got this unsettling feeling of unending emptiness. It's like I'm not of this world anymore and drifting between realms. Spirit! You walk among us! Am I the only one seeing you? I should go to the temple after my shift. I think others can see me too. Or you are just inside my head and none of this exists. The world works in strange ways. I'm sure spirits, such as yourself, have populated our realm for millennia. A spirit that doesn't know that it's a spirit. Many souls wander for years before finally entering the afterlife. Okay, I need to find out more. My pussycat. I'll keep an eye open for it. Do you mind chatting while we look? What's on your mind, dear? I am gripped by this unsettling sensation of ceaseless emptiness. I cannot help but contemplate the possibility that I may be... Uh, how shall I put it? Dead. Oh, not again. I thought I had gotten over this. After my hubby passed, I kept seeing him, and we even had conversations. It lasted for months, and suddenly, he was gone one day. Yes, it could be something like that. Perhaps the soul, untethered by the bounds of mortality, wanders this world in search of the peace it seeks. I'm one of those lost souls who needs to find peace to pass over completely. 
Perhaps. Okay. I'll continue to search for the truth. Kitty? Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Nothing. I have to go. Sweetheart, are you okay? I know this will sound crazy, but I think I've shuffled off the mortal coil. Oh dear, don't say that. I can't imagine being without you. You're likely just under the weather. Have you taken your temperature? No, what I mean is that I'm dead already, and all of this is somehow just in my head. So I'm not me but I'm just a creation of your mind? Maybe. This is freaking me out. Yet somehow, I feel you might be right. If you also think it could be possible, I have no more doubts. I'm dead. It's too much to handle. I want a way out. How can I break the loop and, and reach peaceful oblivion? If you are dead, perhaps you need to witness your body. That way, you can come to full realization. But where? How? Try to find out how you died. I'm sure it was a big leap. Okay, I'll go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. The increase of disorder or entropy is what distinguishes the past from the future giving a direction to time. Stephen Hawking. I think I've jumped before. I've killed myself, but why? Looking down, I see a group of people forming a circle. In the center, I can see myself lying half splattered on the pavement. It's a horrifying sight. You gaze upon your lifeless form, lying motionless on the pavement below, and all uncertainty fades away. You are dead. Perhaps your soul was unable to transcend from the mortal realm, or maybe it's just your brain echoing the last moments of your life before the final neurons flicker out. Regardless, you now know the truth, and this temporal existence is hurtling to an end. Why you killed yourself remains a mystery, something your mind can't comprehend. Yet, there's a kernel of doubt insinuating in your last gasps of reason before diving into total oblivion. What if you were murdered? It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up. Again. That damn intercom is still ringing. I'm not sure why I'm doing this, but I have an inner voice telling me it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Walk along the sidewalk and reality unravels. The very notion of a city falls away, replaced by a locale divorced from time and space. Here, you are stricken with a profound epiphany. I 
think I've done something terrible. You decide it's better to walk along this limbo of consciousness and face the truth. Finally, you've arrived. What are you doing here? You sent for me. What do you mean? You know what you did. You were never around, always neglecting me. So, yeah, I strayed. But what you did to me? That's a whole other level of messed up. Killing me? Really? I never thought you had it in you, but clearly I was wrong. You always were unstable, weren't you? I guess I never really knew who you were or what you were capable of. I lost my mind. I swear it wasn't really me. I broke and couldn't control my actions. It's unbelievable. I was dating a monster, and I realized it too late. I am terribly sorry. I will go and make it right. For you. For us. I hope you will find your answers. Goodbye. Good evening. Good evening to you. Is everything hunky-dory? I gotta go. See you. The end I is can shake nigh. it a bit, but it... The end is nigh! At 7.57pm to be precise, so I'd like to ask you some questions while there's still time. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. I can't shake the feeling that I've done something terrible to the person I love. You seem to have plenty of life experience. Can you help me? Are you implying I have experience with terrible times? Ah, I do, I do. The most horrible event of all, the apocalypse. Ah, here we go again. Each one of us can have our own private apocalypse. It might not have tentacles, but it is cruel, relentless, and wild. How do you overcome the voice haunting your thoughts after you've done something horrific? If you want my help, you must be more precise. What's this terrible act you've done? I think I killed my girlfriend, and now her ghost haunts me. Oh. You must banish it once more. The ghost, or whatever it is you're seeing. Can you remember how you did it the first time? Poison? Uh, strangulation? A, a merciless beating? Please stop. That's not helping. But I, I think it was... With a gun. I think I shot her. Oh, sorry, I, I, I don't have a firearm. However, I can lend you my lucky bullet in exchange for some food. Um, okay. I'll go find some food and be right back. You better get moving. The end is just around the corner. The Hello. What can I do for you? Nothing. I should go. Bye. Hey, hello. <laughs> What's up, pretty boy? This might sound rude, but have you ever done something so terrible it drove you to madness? Because I'm sitting here in the rain, drinking booze, and haven't shaved nor showered for months. You assume I'm a batshit criminal? Sorta, yes. Wait, no, but... Okay, let me rephrase that. Hypothetically speaking, what could be the side effects of killing someone you loved? Let me guess. You're asking for a friend? What is all of this about? I apologize. I think I'm losing my grip on reality. 
I wandered into a strange place that might not exist and was met by a figure who was the mirror image of my girlfriend. She told me I had done something terrible to her. Well, did you? Honestly, it sounds like you've lost your marbles, kid. A thing I know something about. Trauma can be a motherfucker. It can lead a man to memory loss or even drinking. Do you mean that guilt could be causing this? Reality is all about perspective. Whatever your brain tells you, take the color blue. You can measure it on the light spectrum, but it's about how the individual perceives it. For example, my mother, whom I love dearly, wore blue silk pajamas. Even now, at my ripe age, I experience a sense of calm and comfort whenever I see that midnight hue. Or maybe the jerk-ass who tormented you every day at school had a favorite celeste-colored sweater, and now your asshole puckers up every time you catch a glimpse of the clear blue sky. I mean, if we still had blue skies. Get it? Your blue is not my blue. Not the same thing at all. Not even a morsel. Hell, until a certain point, some cultures didn't even have a word for blue, but they could still describe the sky. Eyes are just windows. The world is in your head. So if I wanted to go about erasing the trauma caused by the bully or whoever, how would one get rid of it? How can I reset and see actual reality? I'm not quite convinced there's a genuine reality. But for trauma, there is exposure therapy. Relive the event, go for it, and confront it. Gaze into the big blue violence. And it will gaze back? If it gazes back, flip it off. But how can I... So what? You think you might have beaten up your old lady? Or worse, offed her? Big fucking whoop de doo Move on. But the only way to do that is to do it again. How? That's up to you. But if you bring me some mother's milk, I might be able to help. Help me? To do it again. I might have exactly what you need, kid. Give me some tasty courage, and you'll see what I'm packing. I have this on me. Much obliged, pretty boy. All right, come closer and take this. Careful, do not let anybody see what I'm giving you. Oh, it's a gun. Shut your trap! Are you trying to get us both thrown in the clink? Keep in mind, I'm just lending you this. I expect to get it back once you're finished. Is it loaded? I'm the only thing loaded around here. I used the last of my ammunition a while back. Shooting cans. Cans, sure. Well, much appreciated. Do as I said, and you'll shake all your misery. If that doesn't work, I can't suggest a cognac that does miracles. Hi there. What would you like? Can I get some ramen? Absolutely. Our special is $29.99 credits. Sounds good. I'll take it. Uh, here's your ramen. Thanks. Nothing. I gotta go. Take care. The end is nigh! At 7.57 p.m., to be precise. What do you want? You're disturbing my calling. Here, take this food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better than the stuff I can find in the dumpster outside the Skull Pub. Here, uh, take it. And, and as I said, it's my lucky bullet, so please bring me back the shell case after you've done the deed. Now, you just need a gun, but I, I, I can't help you with that. Thanks. I'd better go now. I hope whatever you do, it'll enlighten your mind. Kitty?
sweetheart. Are you okay? Was... was that you in the strange place? Which place? The dark one, with the fog and the bizarre-shaped rocks. Oh, sweet panda. Did you have one of your bizarro nightmares? No. It seems so real. You were there, and told me that I've done something terrible to you. Well, you haven't. I really think it was just a bad dream. I think I should go. All right, I'm going to the bedroom to relax before dinner. You hear a thunderous explosion. It sends a shockwave into your very core. Yes, it worked! Sorry, it's the only way to end this ordeal. No! Please! No! The moment the gun goes off, the world implodes into darkness. Is this the start of a new loop? Will you awaken to repeat it all once more? The realization hits you like a bag of bricks. It's something you've always known deep down, but tried to suppress. You remember pulling the trigger and Monique's lifeless body collapsing before you. You recall the trial, the conviction, and the present situation. In jails are replaced by mind prisons, a bleak and Sisyphean reality where the condemned are trapped in suspended animation, their brains wired up to machines. It's an eternal prison of the psyche a never-ending cycle of guilt and torment. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. sure why I'm doing this, but I have an inner voice telling me it's the right thing to do. What's shaking? What are you doing here? You weren't supposed to find me here yet. It's not even 7.57 p.m. What? Forget it, okay? I won't even be here if you exit this room and come back in. There's nothing to worry about. I'm gonna call the police. As you wish. How is it possible that everybody's calm and I'm in this unending horror? I need answers! The answers are many. Find your own, keep looking, and keep living, dying, and being reborn for new answers. That's what this is all about. Whatever. What? What happened? Where did he disappear?
walk along the sidewalk and reality unravels. The very notion of a city falls away, replaced by a locale divorced from time and space. Here, you are stricken with a profound epiphany. I see a giant machine in the distance. Could it be a robot? Is there really a monolithic robot in this place? It's better to journey forward and get a better look. It's overwhelming to look at this robot, but I can't tell why. I need to investigate more. It's powered down, and I have a disturbing feeling that switching it on is a terrible idea. Looks like they repaired the guard robot quite quickly. Honestly, I have no idea how long I spent in that bizarre place. What do you want? I came upon a robot while in some sort of dreamscape. I can't get the image of its metallic presence out of my thoughts. Somehow, I feel it's the key to my situation. Do you know anything about a supreme robot? One so powerful that it can twist reality? Every robot knows of this. Now vacate the area. Wait, can you tell me more? Please. Bothersome human? If you must know, some robots say there was an AI so powerful, its brain was split into three pieces and hidden around the city. If you ask me, a robot's brain should remain in a metal skull. Now get lost. No, please, I need- Get lost! Good evening! Um, hi? What do you need from Isaac? I came upon an otherworldly robot in some sort of dreamscape. I'm not even sure it was real. Yet I can't get the image of its metallic presence out of my thoughts. Somehow I feel it's the key to my situation. Do you know anything about such a robot? One so powerful that it can twist reality. Oh yeah! Every robot knows about it! The big, big mind! The su su supreme powerful one! Dang! They split, split, split his brain into three pieces. Three, th three, sting! And scattered them all around. One piece might even be inside m my head. Who knows? <laughs> You mean your brain is one of the three pieces of the dangerous robot's brain? <laughs> Maybe. Ah, swoosh, nice place to hide it, don't you think? I'm not sure. I guess it's worth trying. Can I borrow it for a few minutes? Ah, ah, are you ki 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 kidding? Okay, I might have something wrong. But that's very mean of you to think I can give up my brain. Sting. Just for a few minutes, I'll give it back to you very soon. It'll be like sleeping for a while. You won't even feel it. <sighs> Maybe, uh, uh, still, uh, I can't, 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 even if I want to. What do you mean? My pro, my pro, my programming. Dang, I'm unable to give you my brain or part of it. So, so sorry. Woo! I think I should go. Bye, bye. Bye. Hey, hello. What's up, pretty boy? Actually, I think I better go. I'll be here. A cyber skull serves as the pub's logo, and the name of the establishment glows with a neon shine. nearly there, but I think I need one more action to get it down.
Nah, I should try something else. This isn't... Die. That's weird. Someone threw out a perfectly fine taser. The end is... How about that? There's a robot brain component in here. Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? I came upon a robot while in some sort of dreamscape. I'm not even certain it was real. Even now, speaking to you, I can't get the image of its metallic presence out of my thoughts. Somehow I feel it's the key to my situation. Do you know anything about a machine so powerful that it can twist reality? I do not believe a robot can change reality. However, I do know of a supreme mechanical being. I always thought it was a myth spread among the artificial intelligence community. What's the rumor? They say that this robot was powerful to the point of being dangerous. Its creators foresaw the harm it could bring, so they split its brain into three parts and hid each in a different place. A lowly handybot once told me that one of the pieces might be in this very building. Obviously. I do not believe him, as no one knows this building as well as I do. Uh, interesting. Thanks. It's for air ventilation, and it looks a bit rusty. What does that say about the air? I can't open it with my bare hands. Wonderful. Okay, Alan is not looking in this direction. I'll quickly sneak inside the vent. Hey, I found a piece of the robot brain. Filled with a crumpled up newspaper and some cigarette butts. Can you help me solve this riddle? A crocodile snatches a young boy from a riverbank and promises to return him only if his mother correctly predicts what the crocodile will do next. If the mother guesses that the crocodile will return him and she is right, he will be returned. However, if she is wrong, the crocodile keeps him. But what happens if she answers that the crocodile will not return him? Um, um, uh, woo, ah, boo, oh, 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 dang. Hmm. Hello? Hmm. Looks like it completely crashed. He is frozen. Dead. Or in a coma. Anyway, I guess he doesn't need a brain anymore. Yes, it worked! Wonderful. This is it. Now. Now I remember. I shouldn't have put the pieces together. What have I done? Sir, he's waking up. He must have detected something off kilter. It doesn't matter. We have all the information we need. Have the recovery teams been dispatched? Affirmative, sir. Our personnel is en route to all three sites. 
Excellent. Let's hope the pieces are still on location and unscathed after all these years. With a modicum of luck, we'll have the reassembly complete by sunrise. The year is... And you've been under a hypnotic trance, re-experiencing a slice of your past. As you emerge from the days, the memories flood back. You are a retired AI engineer who decades ago created an artificial mind so powerful that you preferred to destroy it, split it up, and hide the components. Unfortunately, individuals with nefarious intentions lulled you into a trance and used your unwitting guidance to find the hidden parts of the artificial mind. The consequences of their actions could be catastrophic, leading humanity down a dark and dangerous path. It is too late to change what had been set in motion. All you can do now is wait and see what horrors the future holds. It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up again. That damn intercom is still ringing. Remember, I shouldn't have put the pieces together. What have I done? It's 7.33 p.m. You wake up. Again. My dear, it's the year. I feel defeated and weak. I want to close my eyes and simply vanish. Well, I guess you are old enough now to die in peace. <laughs>